Hey Technostuds, in this video we're going to cover IP version 6 subnetting. So we're going to give two different examples. The first one is a very simplistic example, while the second one is a little more complex. So let's jump into it. Here's an example of an IP version 6 address. We know from the prefix right here, it's a slash 64, that the first 64 bits are the network portion. And the second part is going to be the host portion. And that is standard. That's really what we all of our networks should be dealing with is 64. So what is there really to subnet? Well, the thing is, is that what your internet service provider is going to do is if, if they assign you a range of address, it will probably look similar to this right here. They're gonna give you the first 48 bits. And that gives you this range right here to work with for all your subnetting. So if we have a whole hextet to work with, we have 65,536 different networks that we can work with. And we don't need to borrow any of that for the host portion. The host portion is taken care of. That's another 64 bits. So it's, we got a crazy amount of host addresses for each one of those networks. So we've got a huge range to work with, which really allows us to do a lot of uh, manipulation and, and things to that address to make it make a lot of sense. Let's go over a simple example of subnetting. So here we have the first portion portion of this, the first network part of it. This first part right here, like I say, is probably assigned by your internet service provider or given to you. So this is really the portion that we have to work with that we can figure out. This, this hextet, this third hex or fourth hextet that we have right here. All right, so what, uh, how do we want to assign this out? Well, as we see here, we have 454 sites for this with 5,800 nodes per site. So there's 5,800 endpoints per each one of these sites. Well, first of all, this is really not important information at all. We can just ignore this part of it. And the reason why we can ignore that part of it is because we've got 64 bits for the hosts. So that, I mean, we well cover 5,800 nodes is nothing compared to the, the millions upon millions upon uh, billions of of these these uh, uh, this <laughs> of hosts possible hosts that we can have for these networks. So we really only need to worry about this 454. And because this is pretty straightforward, we just need 454 sites. We just start naming them off. The first one's going to be all zeros here. So zero 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 zero. So if we condense this down, this would just be a zero. So colon zero colon. Right. The next one would be colon one colon. The next one colon two colon. I mean, it's hexadecimal. It's counting in hexadecimal. So it's going to go all the way up to F. And then once it hits F, then it's going to go over to one zero, just like we did the hexadecimal counting. So really subnetting with this is pretty straightforward. I mean, you have this huge range to work with. You just count up sequentially and you meet the needs of, of these 454 sites or however many sites there is. More often than not though, you're gonna to wanna to add some sort of organization to it. So what I mean by that is we could have a company that has multiple sites and multiple locations or an example uh, that of a network I worked on the uh, in the past is I had a, a whole campus area network and so we section things off into zones and we had student networks and staff networks and so we really got granular with that. So what does that look like? Let's give an example of let's say you have three regions. You have three regions and at each of those regions, your one region has four sites, another has three sites, maybe one has two sites. And then within there, you have three departments or maybe it's 10 departments or something to that effect. Well, what you can do is because you have such a wide range to work with and you've got the ability to make 65,000 different networks and all you really need to do here, I think if you were to calculate this out, if you had three regions and you had a few sites per each region and you had a few departments, then you'd have quite a few networks, but it's still nothing compared to 65,000. So what we can actually do is assign a nibble to each one of these. So maybe the first one is gonna be just the region. 
and it's uh, let's see since this is this is um, uh, four bits so we have up to 16 regions here so our three is well covered in there and then we have nine sites so let's do the second one is going to be the sites so this is for sites here and then I uh, and we have 16 different sites that we can have per region. And then we have three departments. So anything left over, we could just say this is for the departments. And we've got uh, 256 departments that we could have. Or let's say I de de determined that I want more sites per region, then maybe I could cut this over and split it up a little differently. So I've got some ways to organize this, but the key to this is you do it by nibble and it makes life so much easier when you're doing this subnetting. It just really makes it um, real easy to break this out. So then I can start breaking this down into what are the IP addresses then actually assigning. Well, here at the top here, I've got what it is assigned to me, which is a slash 48 here. And then what I do is I say, okay, well, that first nibble is going to represent the region. So I've got zero for US West. I got a one for US East. I got a two for Mexico. And you'll notice then that trickles down to all sites in that region. So zero, 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 zero for all of everything in US West. Here's one, 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 one for everything in uh, US East. We've got two, two, two. I mean, you get the point that it's the same throughout this. And then I break it down even further. Okay, what are the sites? Well, for Seattle, it's gonna be zero. For Portland, it's gonna be one. For San Francisco, it's gonna be two. And for Los Angeles, it's gonna be three. So if we take a look at Los Angeles and it's broken down into multiple uh, departments here. So each one of them, zero for management, one for operations, two for sales. And that's gonna be seen the same no matter what site you're in. So now I know just by looking at a number, if I see a one in the region area, I know it's US East. If I see a, uh, let's say a, um, a uh, to one, I'm going to know that that's Tijuana. That's in Mexico and it's the Tijuana site. If I see a 2000 or let's say a 0302, then I know zero is going to be US West. I know three means it's Los Angeles and zero two means that it's the sales network. And so I can easily identify any of the networks. I can do things like ACLs where I can start blocking traffic and making things more secure. Uh, this makes it really easy to do that type of work. This makes it really easy to identify certain traffic and where it's going. So it really just works out really well when you have so many bits that you can work with and you can quickly identify um, where all of this traffic is coming from and how to uh, assign the traffic out to begin with.